Hello, and welcome to part two of the three-part video series on installing Containerized Operations Bridge. In this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare for the installation of Containerized OpsB for evaluation purposes. This video is intended to be used as an introduction by those responsible for preparing for the installation of Containerized OpsB for evaluation purposes. For detailed documentation regarding planning the installation of containerized OpsB, please go to the URL shown on the screen. This is the Prepare introduction page in the Containerized Operations Bridge online documentation. The remainder of this video will show you how to complete each of the 16 steps required to prepare for the installation of containerized OpsB. Step 1 is to activate your Docker Hub account. A Docker Hub account is needed in order to download MicroFocus product images from the Docker Hub. Skip this section if you already have an active Docker Hub account, which has been authorized by MicroFocus. To activate your Docker Hub account, launch a web browser, then go to the URL at hub.docker.com. Enter your chosen Docker ID, email address, and password. A Docker ID is a username comprised of 4 to 30 letters and digits. The password must be at least 9 characters in length. Next, check I'm not a robot, then click on Sign Up. Next, you will activate your Docker Hub account with MicroFocus by sending an email to the MicroFocus Software Fulfillment and Licensing Team for your region with the following information. Company name, MicroFocus Customer SAID, Docker ID as created in the previous step, Company Email Address, and License Edition, either OpsB Premium or Ultimate. You will receive an email notification from MicroFocus authorizing your Docker Hub account to access the MicroFocus product images. This may take one or more business days. Meanwhile, you can proceed to the next step. For more information regarding activating your Docker Hub account, please go to the URL shown on the screen. This is the Containerized OpsB online documentation page for explaining how to activate your Docker Hub account. Step 2 is to download the required installation packages. Download the required installation packages from the URL shown on the screen. After the download has completed, Choose a directory as your temporary install directory, such as var temp on the master node. This directory must have at least 15 gigabytes free space. The remainder of this video series assumes your temporary install directory is var temp. Copy the downloaded packages to this directory. Next, Unzip the Container Deployment Foundation for ITOM file. Then, unzip the ITOM Platform Foundation file using the commands displayed on your screen. Finally, unzip the Operations Bridge Suite file using the command displayed on your screen. For more information regarding download the required installation packages, please go to the URL shown on the screen. This is the Containerized OpsB Download the Required Installation Packages page in the online documentation. Step 3 is to prepare a relational database. Containerized OpsB supports PostgreSQL and Oracle relational databases. Embedded PostgreSQL is supported by MicroFocus in non-production environments only. This is what we will use for the assessment of Containerized OpsB. In a production environment, use an external PostgreSQL or external Oracle database. For more information, please go to the URL shown on the screen. This is the Containerized OpsB Prepare Relational Database page. Step 4 is to prepare the Vertica database. Before installing Vertica, Complete the prerequisites from each of the Vertica documentation links displayed on your screen. Shown are commands run in the MicroFocus Technical Success Lab to configure the Vertica server 
to meet Vertica prerequisites. Please review each of the items on the left to determine what needs to be done in your environment. Next, copy the Vertica installation package from the master node to the Vertica node using the commands displayed on your screen. Next, install the Vertica package using the commands displayed on your screen. Next, run the install Vertica command as shown on your screen. Next, update the TZ data package using the commands displayed on your screen. Next, run the admin tools program to enable the community license as shown on your screen. Next, switch to the DB admin user. Then, create the ITOMDB database within Vertica, as shown on your screen. Next, configure logging to ensure that the database is regularly cleaned out and that the logs are only kept for a week, as shown on your screen. Next, copy the COSO Vertica plugin package from the master node to the Vertica node using the commands displayed on your screen. Next, install the COSO Vertica plugin package on the Vertica node using the commands displayed on your screen. Next, set environment variables required by the DB initialization script, then run the DB init script using the commands displayed on your screen. For information regarding how to prepare a Vertica database for production, please go to the URL shown on the screen. This is the Containerized OpsB Prepare Vertica Database online documentation page. Step five is to synchronize time between the servers in the cluster. Run the commands shown on the screen on the master first, then the workers, then the Vertica host. For more information on how to synchronize time, please go to the URL shown on the screen. This is the Containerized OpsB Synchronized Time page. Step six contains specific steps which you will skip or follow depending on your environment. For more information on installation environment specific steps, please go to the URL shown on the screen. This is the Containerized OpsB Installation Environment Specific Steps online documentation page. Step seven is to run the node prereq script. The node prereq script installs CDF required packages and configures system parameters required by CDF. Copy the script from the master to each worker, then change the access permission on the script to be executable. Execute the script on the master, then on each worker. For more information on how to run node prereq, please go to the URL shown on the screen. This is the Containerized OpsB Run Node Prereq page. Step 8 is to install Containerized OpsB's prerequisite packages on the master node and then on the worker nodes. Use the yum install command as shown on the screen. For more information on how to install the prerequisite packages, please go to the URL shown on the screen. This is the Containerized OpsB Install the Prerequisite Packages page. Step 9 is to check the default gateway settings. Execute the command shown on the screen on the master, workers, and Vertica host to verify that the default gateway is set. If it is, now execute the second command shown on the screen. For more information on how to check the default gateway settings, please go to the URL shown on the screen. This is the Containerized OpsB Check the Default Gateway Settings page. Step 10 is to configure a storage driver. Execute the command shown on the screen on the master host to verify that the Overlay 2 device is used on Docker. For more information on how to configure a storage driver, please go to the URL shown on the screen. This is the Containerized OpsB Configure a Storage Driver page. 
Step 11 is to configure NFS volumes. Execute the command shown on the screen on the master host to configure NFS volumes on the master. For information on how to configure NFS volumes in production, please go to the URL shown on the screen. This is the Containerized OpsB Configure NFS Volumes page. Step 12 is to create local persistent volumes on worker nodes. For evaluation purposes, local persistent volumes are required on only one worker node. If you are installing for other purposes, please go to the URL shown on the screen. Otherwise, execute the commands shown on the screen on one worker node. For information on how to create local persistent volumes on worker nodes in a production environment, please go to the URL shown on the screen. This is the Containerized OpsB Create Local Persistent Volumes on Worker Nodes page. Step 13 is to configure the install.properties file. Execute the commands shown on the screen on the master to configure the install.properties file. For more information on how to configure the install.properties file, please go to the URL shown on the screen. This is the containerized OpsB configure the install.properties file page. Step 14 is to create and configure a config.json file. Execute the commands shown on the screen on the master to create and configure a config.json file. For more information on how to create and configure a config.json file, please go to the URL shown on the screen. This is the containerized OpsB create and configure a config.json file page. Step 15 is to run a pre-check before you install CDF. Execute the command shown on the screen on the master, copy the pre-check script to the workers, then run the script on the workers. Continuing with step 15, these screens show the commands to copy the pre-check script to the workers, then run the script on the workers. For more information on how to run a pre-check before you install CDF, please go to the URL shown on the screen. This is the containerized OpsB run a pre-check before you install CDF page. Step 16 is to create an agent metric collector integration user. If you will be collecting data from operations agents older than version 12.14, Execute the commands described at the URL shown on your screen. This is the Containerized OpsB online documentation page for Create an Agent Metric Collector Integration User. Thank you for watching part two of the three part video series on installing Containerized Operations Bridge.